Today, we are going to talk about what's arguably the most popular laptop in the world by far, the Apple MacBook Pro. Now, this is probably a laptop that you have seen basically anywhere, be it at school, at the office, or in a cafe, you name it. But you would also know that in the recent years, Apple hasn't really been giving the MacBook Pro its proper pro status. Pro as in for professionals, like those people who want to do actual serious work. But that all changes this generation. The all new MacBook Pros featuring that new Apple Silicon, or those two new Apple Silicon, well, the MacBook Pro has now regained its proper pro status. It's now an actual pro machine. So the first thing that you will definitely notice with the new design is that it's actually thicker, which is very unlike Apple. Apple has always been pursuing thinness, but for this generation, they are putting, finally, function over form, and it's great. Because I would say that Apple has probably reached a threshold where they kind of realize that you actually need space for sustained professional level of performance. And to be very honest, I'm actually liking the thicker profile. It feels just right when you're holding the laptop, walking about, or even if you're just resting your hands on the keyboard. It also features a slightly more squarish design that I also personally prefer, and the finish on the aluminum is just as immaculate as ever. Now, one big difference is over on the bottom, where you get an embossed MacBook Pro text right in the center. That's kind of nice. But more importantly, Apple has totally redesigned the laptop feed. Instead of it being slightly spherical or elliptical, it's now larger, thicker, and completely flat. This new design should last a lot longer. But now let's address the elephant in the room, the display, or more specifically, that notch. As they say, courage. <laughs> but on a more serious note, I really didn't have much issues with the notch. Due to the way Mac OS is designed and the overall 16 by 10 aspect ratio of the display, that notch is almost always together with the taskbar, which is generally an area which you wouldn't be looking at all the time. And even if you were to consume media in full screen, there is hardly any content in 16 by 10. To justify the notch, Apple has finally increased the resolution to 1080p, full HD. So that's what we are getting here. Gone are the days of 720p HD. That's out of the way. We are finally getting full HD. And as you can tell, the image quality is definitely much improved. And coupled with the studio quality mics on the MacBook Pro, it does make for a very great experience. But with that said, since there's already a notch, Face ID would have been amazing. Facial recognition via Windows Hello has already been available for a long time on Windows-based laptops. Apple really ought to add Face ID. Had they done so, it would have also lessened the impact and increased the justification for a notch. But oh well, Apple is Apple. Here's hoping for the next one. However, putting the notch aside, the display itself is just downright amazing. You get a 14.2 inch Liquid Retina XDR display that has a resolution of 3024 by 1964, resulting in 254 pixels per inch. The use of mini LEDs is what separates this display from the rest, and where it gets the XDR name. It can get up to 1000 nits of sustained brightness, and up to 1600 nits in peak brightness with a contrast ratio of a million to one. It also supports 10-bit color, P3 color coverage, and true tone. Now, what does that all mean? <laughs> in simple terms, this display is downright gorgeous, and it's basically great for anything you want to do on it. Text is clear and sharp when you're just simply browsing or reading. Colors are nice and vibrant with deep blacks when you're consuming content, and the support for 10-bit color and P3 color coverage means it's well-suited for content creation. For professionals, exactly what this laptop is meant for. It really is great, and I would say that only OLED-equipped Windows-based laptops would come close. But because this uses mini LEDs, you needn't worry about burn-in and any form of automatic dimming, especially on a white background. But the best part about this display is ProMotion. We are finally getting 120Hz on a MacBook Pro, and it's glorious. And the best part about it is that it's variable refresh rate. Meaning, if nothing is moving on screen, the refresh rate can actually drop well below the standard 60, which helps with battery life. And yes, it definitely shows. Apple claims up to 17 hours of video playback on the 14-inch model, which we have here. In reality, with more actual real-world usage consisting of a mixture of browsing, video consumption, and a bit of photo editing, we were getting right about 10 hours. 
a far cry from 17 hours but still very respectable, with ProMotion enabled no less. So back to the point, the display is just great and battery life isn't really affected if at all. But now, let's talk about the bottom half of the laptop because there are also a few changes here and there. That touch bar is now gone and I'm very happy about that. The touch bar was really a novelty more so than anything. It was supposed to be something great, but it definitely wasn't. Apple has finally recognized how meaningless it was and have thus now provided a full-size function row. So much better. As for the keys themselves, they feel just like the previous generation and you of course get Touch ID in the top right corner, which acts as the power button as well. As for the trackpad, it really needs no introduction. Same as ever, great as ever. Arguably still the best in the entire industry. Moving on to the speakers, they are improved. Definitely does sound clean and crisp while also providing a little bit of bass which was surprising. There are some Windows-based laptops that do sound a tad better, but not by much. This is still really good, and honestly, quite a bit of an improvement over the standard M1s from the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. And now, ports. We get actual ports. After almost half a decade or more, Apple has finally decided to just grace us with their wisdom. The huge thing that makes the comeback better than ever is MagSafe, now MagSafe 3. This is really awesome, and if you use the MacBook Pro from 2015 and before, you will know that this simple design has saved the lives of many MacBook Pros. It's great. But apart from that, you still get a total of 3 Thunderbolt 4 ports, a high impedance headphone jack, HDMI 2.0, and a full-size SD card reader. Photographers, videographers, or really anybody in general, rejoice! You can now bring a MacBook Pro anywhere you want and not worry too much about bringing a dongle. This should have the ports you need built right in as it should be. And we now finally get into performance, and this is a huge step forward for Apple with their all-new M1 Pro and M1 Max. Today, we just have the M1 Pro, and in fact, our unit is basically the base model MacBook Pro 14-inch with the 8-core CPU and 14-core GPU M1 Pro, 16GB of unified memory and 512GB of SSD storage. Now let's get straight into the heart of things. Despite this being the lesser M1 Pro, the performance really amazed me. It can pretty much match up against the likes of Intel and even potentially reach what Ryzen has to offer in the laptop space. In fact, if you're to use native Apple software like Final Cut Pro, the difference is even more apparent. It really is amazing. We're talking 8K Apple ProRes 4 to 2 footage. A 7 minute edit only took just about 3 minutes to render on Final Cut Pro. That's insane! And even if you're talking about more standardized footage from hybrid cameras and as such, on Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, a 10 minute 4K edit takes just about 5 minutes to render. It's unlike nothing before it. It even managed to render while being pretty much silent and with temperatures well within reason, and either on battery or plugged in. But the larger upgrade comes from the GPU side of things, and this is really amazing. I could run Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1200p high settings and still get really playable frame rates, almost a solid 60, putting it in line in performance from the likes of an RTX 3050 or even an RTX 3050 Ti. It's downright amazing. And yes, you have to remember that the M1 Pro is like an APU. Your CPU, your GPU, your memory, it's all on the same chip, and yet, Despite that, it's able to dish out performance equivalent to a dedicated GPU and CPU combo, while drawing way less power. It's so much more efficient. Gaming on a MacBook Pro with actual great performance. Who would have thought? It's now an actual reality. I really like the new MacBook Pro with the new Apple Silicon. It's really that good. As someone who don't really use a MacBook or macOS in general, this MacBook Pro is actually enticing me to jump over. It's really making me want to buy one, even though I don't need it at all. But with that said, with this amount of performance, you do have to pay for it. The MacBook Pro 14 inch starts at $19.99 US dollars or $29.99 Singapore dollars. That is quite steep, as the minimum point of entry to get a MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip, and not even the full version at that. Also to note is that at that price, it comes bundled with the standard 67 watt charger, which isn't ideal. You will definitely want to upgrade to the 96 watt charger at the very least, which adds a little bit to the cost. Now is it worth that price tag? In my opinion, absolutely. 
but it's definitely still undeniably expensive. If you're a professional, this is probably a no-brainer. But if you're someone who needs a MacBook or you're looking to get a new MacBook, you have to stop and ask yourself, do you really need the added horsepower from the M1 Pro or the M1 Max? Or do you just need a laptop that can run macOS? Now, if you're the former, I would say just go for it. The 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros featuring the new M1 Pro and M1 Max, they are very capable machines and perform admirably. They are honestly, in my opinion, worth every single cent. But if you're the latter and you just need to use macOS, then I would say save a bit. Take a look at the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip or the MacBook Air with the M1 instead. Those machines are still very capable and more than enough for your daily needs. But in any case, I'm really liking the new MacBook Pros from Apple. They are just that good. And it's actually now Pro. Properly Pro. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. And if you'd like to, do check out the affiliate links in the description as well. If you do, thanks for the support. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Till the next one. See ya.